Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rahul Krishnan. I have spent the past five years helping aerospace and defense companies to enhance their research and development capabilities. And today I'm here to share some best practices that I picked up while working with these companies. And today I will be focusing only on the engineering and uh, technology side of things. And I will take a simple product development uh, cycle to explain why R&D is important and the role it plays throughout the life cycle of a, pro of a product. Everything starts with an idea, right? So idea can be a product you want to develop and sell or what your customer is asking for. It can be to develop an advanced weapon system, radar communication, detection system, advanced fighter jet, missile, rocket, satellite, or, or a space rover. But based on the requirements, we will develop multiple conceptual models. And after quickly evaluating each of those, we finalize one or two of those concepts and start to make a complete digital representation or a 3D CAD model, as we call it. Once we have the model set up with accurate material information, we need to test those models in real life scenarios. We need to simulate or predict the behavior of the product in real life by putting, the, by putting its model in a digital environment, which mimics the real life conditions. Basically, simulation gives us the ability to explore and predict how products will work or, or won't work in real world. So through simulation, we will come to know if something needs to be changed in the actual design to make the product perform as expected. Simulation also helps us to look at what if scenarios, like if we are designing an aircraft, what would be the drag coefficient if the location of the wing uh, or the design of the wing changes or, or change the thickness of the base plate of an armored vehicle to see the extent of the damage caused by a buried explosive. There, there are many uh, things we can try on a product without actually making a physical prototype of it. After we are happy with the results from simulation, we finally make a prototype and run one or two physical tests to validate the simulation results. We may test the product alone or integrate it with other products and see how it works. Maybe we want to change something after testing. Maybe we want to save the test data and use it for simulation of the next version of the product. We then manufacture it using traditional methods or even 3D print it. Then the product gets deployed for mission then we need to perform predictive maintenance to achieve its maximum life. The interesting thing is data is always flowing in both directions. We are connecting and analyzing data at each stage of the product life cycle, and we need to run simulation at all of these stages. For example, let's say the drone we manufactured and supplied to the armed forces is airborne, and some components get damaged mid-mission. With the help of onboard sensors sending live data to a ground control station, an engineer can run quick simulation to analyze the extent of the damage and conclude if the drone can still be airborne for another hour and same time alert the maintenance team. This is done by creating a digital twin of the live asset. So now let's take a look at the research and development capabilities needed to develop top quality defense product at lower cost. Uh, here I've taken the 3D model of an MQ-9 Reaper. To develop something like this, if we look at, uh, look at it from an engineering perspective, there are so many functionalities that need to be developed and tested. Those functionalities include looking at the aer aerodynamic aspect of the drone to ensure there is no drag affecting the flight time or things like developing avionics or flight control uh, station, stealth capabilities, store separation, developing optical systems and so on. I'll not be explaining uh, each of this today because uh, last time, I mean, a few months back I did this, it took us three hours. So I will not get into the details. Uh, that was for a local company. Uh, so this was just an example of an airborne system. So it, it can be an armored vehicle or an autonomous uh, weapon system, a radar communication device, or even a PCB or a microchip. But there would be many such features or functionalities that needs to be designed and tested before it's actually physically tested and manufactured. So next, in the, in the coming slides, we will look at the capabilities we need to establish uh, for a successful R&D in the country. I thought it's best to talk along the acquisition process to get you familiarized with this. Let's try to quantify the impact 
of research and development during the stage of an acquisition process. During pre-systems acquisition, we would be analyzing our alternatives to meet the requirements, and, and we would then create multiple designs out of which one needs to be selected as the best, right? And when we develop these design prototypes, we need tools that help us to see which ones are low in risk, cost effective, easier to manufacture, or can it, can it use parts from an existing product and, and so on. Once we select the best design, we then need to clean it up and ready it for serious simulations, which is followed by manufacturing. Here is, this is where we conduct in-depth investigation of various aspects while we consider cost, labor, materials, and so on. And even after the product is manufactured and deployed, we need tools to help us provide life cycle support at a lower cost, right? So if we use simulation at all these stages, we are 58 percentage more likely to hit product cost targets, 44 percentage more likely to hit product launch date because you know we often hear product launch days being missed and so on. But we could even improve cycle times by 30 percentage or more. So what I'm trying to say is at each stage of the acquisition process by using simulation, you would be saving hundreds to millions or even billions of dollars. And there are five critical capabilities we would need to have such quantitative impacts from research and development. The first capability is having a simulation solution that can be deployed across the entire acquisition process with tools specifically designed for each of those phases. So for example, with, with tools like ANSYS Discovery, you can explore ideas, you can iterate and innovate in real time when, while we are analyzing uh, alternatives and testing multiple design prototypes. And when we finalize on a design, that will be taken for manufacturing. For that, we need proven tools that gives highly accurate results by considering the multiple physics affecting our product performance. And when it comes to manufacturing, we need to see how our product is manufactured. If we are manufacturing an explosive, we cannot see what's really happening at a given time during the manufacturing process. You know, that, that's not possible. It's, it's an explosive we are talking about. So we need to simulate and optimize the manufacturing process first. And we might even find ways to cut the manufacturing time by 50% or more, because this has happened recently in UAE with a company. We have seen that happening. In another scenario, if we are 3D printing some metal parts, we need to simulate that printing process itself to avoid costly printing mistakes, because 3D printing is not like plastic printing. The metal part or the that powder itself is very costly. You cannot print and say, okay, I'll try printing again. And as the product, we make is simulated using real physics. We can use that simulation model to create a digital twin of a live asset and feed that live data onto, uh, onto the model to see what exactly is happening at real time. And we can use this live information to plan for predictive maintenance and life cycle support. So as you see here, we need tools that serve the purpose at each stage of the acquisition process. And the second uh, capability we would need is integration from component level to mission level. If you take a drone or a missile, there are many small components, subsystems, embedded software, and even mission scenarios that needs to be tested independently together with some other products or uh, devices. And we might start from basic printed circuit boards to developing an antenna system, or even look at integrating those components on a bigger platform made by us or somebody else. Because if you look at the example of Edge, multiple entities are developing parts of a huge product, right? So they need to integrate them and see how it performs altogether. And, and finally, we would want to see how that integrated system will function in a mission scenario. That's very important. So tools like ANSYS SDK is must have for companies developing airborne systems and, and wants to validate their products in a mission environment. We can even map the whole battlefield and decide a flight path for a mission. So integrating physics-based accuracy throughout the modeling and simulation pyramid, as you see here, is critical to ensure the fastest accurate assessment of mission critical technology, which helps us to reduce the risk of failure at a later stage. Because once we do all of these, once we manufacture and deploy it, 
then if you find something it's too late for that we cannot you know callbacks are, are not easy task it's cost consuming and it, it affects our product goodwill and company goodwill as well and a key point to understand about simulation is that it's based on real physics because i in, in previous slides i mentioned physics multi physics and so on because it uses mathematical calculations such as the maxwell's equation if you know about that to provide real results to us for example when we are trying to find the air flowing over a wing to see the drag forces because when there is air flowing over the wing there is something air pushing the uh, wing right and the aircraft as such so we would need to see what are the drag coefficient and the same time we would also want to know if there is any damage to the wings due to that stress generated by the air flow so here we are combining two physics one is the fluid mechanics part where we look at the air flow and the structural mechanics part where we look at the structural damages so that's why it is important for simulation to accurately capture this interdependent physics behavior and validate that and ansys is the world's leading physics based simulation provider with a 50 year uh, proven history of delivering the most physics based simulation capabilities available and this capability to connect multiple physics helps multiple teams to work together easily on the same project without wasting time and effort in getting tools to work together because i've seen multiple companies having different teams one team would be developing the electronics part of it another team would look at the you know aerodynamic part of it but these teams have to work together at some stage right and that's where this kind of multi physics capabilities are very important otherwise they would spend a lot of time in just transferring that data to another team and it's counterproductive to have so many tools that just doesn't talk to each other right so just like the products we make simulation also should be interoperable and open to multi tool workflows because let's say i am using ansys for serious simulation and at same time i want to use tools like matlab for some other calculation i need to be able to connect these two tools seamlessly i do not i shouldn't have to spend hours or days to just connect these two things and ansys allows teams to manage multi physics systems drive business processes project management integrated simulation and optimization all while supporting interoperability with the existing tool ecosystem for example we can even integrate uh, simulation with your erp system like sap or plm tools or even any cat tools available in the market and last but most important is the workforce development it is critical to develop the right talent and right partnership in the country uae universities or universities in uae has already realized the need to include simulation in their curriculum to produce graduates who are ready who are industry ready who can join a company and immediately start developing revolutionary products and and we need to organize regular technology seminars and uh, on emerging uh, technologies to keep them updated and ansys regularly organizes this kind of seminars on new products technologies and features for our customers in the region training uh, is another integral part of the workforce development and this can be standard training on a particular tool or a training on a specific topic such as development of a radar system or a flight control station and this process must be followed by continuous support and capability development it shouldn't be uh, broken it should be continuous actually and i have been involved in i have been directly involved in the training and development of graduates from uae universities who join companies as design engineers and i've seen them grow and become head of departments and so on and and that's where in all my presentations i always thank those visionary leaders who provide such technology access and room for these engineers to learn and grow and and we also need to promote more collaborative work environment where several companies work together to achieve a common goal that's the example of edge i mentioned and relationship between industry and academy is crucial for the development of a new generation that's passionate about building a nation that with with strong research and development supremacy and this this is a case study we did back in 2016 for an armored vehicle manufacturer who wanted to see how their engine would perform uh, after a given amount of mission time and this was a study we conducted about developing a new silencer module so we can even uh, you know have simulation results in 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 a video format and so on as you can see here you can see a bullet passing through a barrel 
an ANSYS bullet. <laughs> yeah. So it passes through the barrel and you can see the forces behind it. Now it's entering the silencer. Now it's exiting. So we can simulate all of these scenarios.